Hello everybody, this is part 8 on how to make a shooter game in Scratch. In this tutorial, I will be making some finishing touches on the shop. If you haven't seen parts 1-7 through seven yet, uh, check them out, link is in the description below. Anyways, I know I have been working on the shop for quite a while, but I guarantee you, I will be jumping back onto the gameplay stuff right after the shop works completely. I will be starting where I left off last video, where I made the upgrades for the machine gun. Actually, I need to first fix something before I do that. If I uh, go to my shop here and buy the increased bullet damage for the pistol, nothing actually changes. I'll show you the variable here for pistol damage. So right now it's 2, right? And after I buy this, then it's still 2. So something did not work here. And that is because I sort of messed up in the upgrade sprite. So go to your upgrade sprite and under this block here, upgrade, you want to, instead of setting damage to pistol damage, you want to change pistol damage by 1. Uh, this way, the damage can increase. And in your player, you want to always check to see if your damage is equal to your pistol damage, which is 2, instead of your machine gun damage, which is 1. So let's go to control, add an if statement, and then go to operators, grab an equals, and go to data, grab the gun variable, and check if the gun is equal to pistol, oops, then set damage to pistol damage. So drag the, this block from the if key one pressed into this if statement, and then put it into the forever loop under if shop open equals no. And let's actually change it to an if else statement. So take that out again, sorry. Um, if gun equals pistol, then set damage to pistol damage. Else you want to check if gun is equal to machine gun, machine gun, then set damage to 1. And then put that back in your forever loop. Now if you try, then we have our pistol damage variable here, which is 2. And it takes 3 shots to kill one of these orange zombies. 1, 2, 3. And go to your shop, and then buy the upgrade. And now pistol damage is 3, and it should take 2 shots to kill the orange zombie, so 1, 2, and now it works. So now that we fixed this, we can work on our machine gun upgrades. So the first thing I uh, sort of noticed was that if you go to your machine gun page, and then you exit the shop, then the upgrade icons stay there, and that's a problem. So we're going to have to go to our upgrade icon sprite, and go to your show hide block, which is all the way over here for me. And then just grab an extra check whether the clone numbers are 4, 5, and 6. So go to your operators, grab an AND, copy this, and check if clone number is equal to 4. Then do the stuff in the IF statement. And I'll just copy this, put it inside of this IF statement, change this to 2 and 5. And do the same for the last one. So 3. 3 and 6. Now this should work. Let's uh, let's go to the shop. And then it's actually ore. Sorry about that. So replace all of your ands with ores. Yep, so this one. And the same with this one. Clone number equals 2 or clone number equals 5. And the same thing for the last one. 3 or 6. Now let me try it again. Now exiting the shop on the pistol screen should work. And exiting the shop on the machine gun screen should also work. So yeah. Now uh, we want these machine gun upgrades to actually do something. Because they don't actually help your machine gun right now. So we want to create some machine gun variables. So let's create one um, called machine gun firing speed. Click OK. Let's create one more called machine gun damage. Oh yeah, and one more called machine gun accuracy. Because that's the upgrades for my machine gun. These are the values I'm changing from my upgrades. So let's go to wherever we set those values. Um, yeah, it's sprite 1, which is your player. And let's set machine gun firing speed to 0 
because I wait 0.1 seconds in here. So let me set that. Drag it under your wind flag clicked. And then drag the variable into your wait to 0.1 seconds. And let's also set machine gun damage. Uh, yep. To 1. And drag the variable into the damage here. And we should be good. Now for the accuracy, go to your bullet sprite. And let's set machine gun accuracy to 8. And as you see here, the bullets point in direction of the player. But if the gun is a machine gun, then it adds or subtracts 8 to the direction. And that makes the inaccuracy. So let's um, drag the machine gun accuracy variable into here. And let's go to operators, grab a multiplication, and type in negative 1. Because we want negative 1 times the machine gun accuracy, which is negative 8, to machine gun accuracy, which is 8. That's by how much you want the direction of the bullet to change to make the little inaccuracy effect. So drag that into here. And now everything should work the same as normal. Let me just try it. So yep, it's all good. And now let's work on the upgrades for the machine gun. So go to your upgrade icon sprites. And now you want more checks in your upgrade block here for your machine gun upgrades. I'm first gonna edit the name of the block because it's sort of confusing. So I'm just going to move the cost here on the right, like this, I guess, so it's more clear. And yeah, now we want to add more clone number checks, right? So let's um, grab an if-else statement and first put this pistol knockback inside of the if, and then put this if-else into the else, and then make this if clone number equals 3. And this was the same thing as before, but since we're making more clone number checks, I just made this into an if-else statement. So now, uh, copy this if-else statement, and change the clone number to 4, and that is the faster firing speed upgrade. So change machine gun firing speed by, let's say, um, let's see. I'll make something noticeable, so negative 0 0.05 or 0 0.04 like I guess and then copy the if else statement if clone number equals 5 that would be increased bullet damage so change machine gun damage by 1 and then grab in if else statement again copy this if clone number equals 6 that is increased accuracy then change machine gun accuracy by, let's say, negative 3. So that makes it more accurate. And I just noticed a typo in my description here. It says increase accuracy instead of increased. So I'm just going to change that. Um, increased. All right. And I'm going to center this just to make it look better. Okay. Let's see. Okay, maybe to the right a bit. Okay. Oops. Alright, this is pretty good. And now these upgrades should actually work. So I'm going to first set the cache to uh, 200 so I can buy all of the machine gun upgrades. So let's start with machine gun faster firing speed. So first it shoots like this, all right, and then after you buy it, then it shoots like this, which is a bit faster. It's, yeah, yep. Next one is increased bullet damage. So right now you should be able to kill the green zombies in three hits. One, two, three. Oh, oh yeah, that's pistol, sorry. Machine gun, one, one, two, three. So three hits, right? And after we buy the upgrade, then we should be able to kill it in two hits. So one, two. Yeah, so it works. 
Cool. And now for the last one, increased accuracy. Let's see. Um, okay. Right now, it's pretty inaccurate. There's a large spread. And after we buy it, then it is more accurate. Yeah, it's a slight change, but the machine gun is more accurate. So, yeah. Also, I accidentally clicked on the white screen thing. So, I'm just going to go back 99 layers and put it in the one flag clicked. So, yeah. And one more thing, it's just a small detail, but whenever I hover over the arrow, I want some brightness effect just to show that you, you know, are hovering over the arrow. So I'm just going to go in here, and I'm going to separate the if touching mouse pointer and mouse down into if touching mouse pointer, and then if mouse down. And actually, I'm going to grab an if else statement and change this outer if statement to an if else and then drag this back to the if statement and then let's go to looks I'm gonna grab a set brightness effect to let's say 25 put it under the if touching mouse pointer else set brightness effect to 0 and now we should be good let me try it and now we have that little brightness effect I'm going to change that to 15, actually. So, yeah. It's just a small thing, but, you know, it just makes the game look better. And now I think I have completed the shop. So, yeah. It looks pretty good. And let me test it again. Okay. It works pretty well. So, yeah. Now I think I can now work on the gameplay aspects. And I think I'm going to start by adding a new type of zombie. So we have the normal ones, we have the strong ones, and I think we're missing the fast ones. So I'm going to go to costumes, and then duplicate this, and create a new one. I'll just paint this one yellow. So now we have our third zombie. I'll call this one fast. And yeah. Now I noticed that my costume names here are the same as my variable names so as you see here if zombie equals to normal then switch costume to normal and if zombie equals strong then switch costume to strong and that can be simplified by using a switch costume to zombie which is the same thing but it cuts a bit of code so I'm gonna do that but don't do that if your costume names are not the same as your variable names okay so now I can remove the switch costume to blocks and I'm going to add one more if statement. If zombie equals fast, then set zombie lives to, I think I'll also say three, and put this back in. And now in my when flag clicked um, block here, we want to add the fast zombies in. So I'll grab one more if else statement. And I'll make this pick random one to five now. So one out of five zombies spawned will be strong. And um, one out of five zombies will be fast. So I'll make this number two. And then else, the rest of the three out of five zombies will be normal. So this picks a random number between one and five. If it's one, then, spawns, then spawn a strong zombie. If the random number is two, then spawn a fast zombie. Else, the rest, three, four, and five, are going to spawn normal zombies. And then drag the create clone myself back into here at the end of this if else statement. And now in the for loop over here, we want to have if zombie equals to fast, then move, let's say, 2.5 steps. Drag this back in. And one more for the um, cash drops. So if zombie equals fast, then change cash by... I'll say 2 with this one, but I'll change cash by 3 with the strong one. So, yeah. Also, I think I'm going to change the strong lives to um, maybe 9, just to make it a bit more difficult to kill. And I think we should be fine. So, I'll test it. Okay. 
we have our two zombies. Where is the fast one? Oh, there it is. And that went super fast. Oh, yeah, because it's uh, 25 steps. Sorry. Uh, 2.5. 0.5. Alright, now let's try it again. Machine gun. And pistol. Alright, we have our fast zombies. Maybe those are a bit too slow, so I'll make it like 3.5. And we should be good. Okay, we have our normal, and there's our fast zombies. And that's pretty cool. Alright. Yeah, so we have our fast zombies now. And let me try buying an, an upgrade. I'll upgrade my machine gun to faster firing speed. And yeah, I'll do that for right now. Now it fires much faster. And okay, I'm not sure if my white screen is showing. Let me see. Um, go to front. Yeah, it's not showing, so that's weird. Alright, I'll make it go to front and then go back a few layers. Um, keep going back. Alright, this is good. Wait, no, one more layer. Um, okay, this is good. Now we have our pause effect in the background, so yeah, alright. Um, okay. Now, uh, one thing, some of you guys have wanted the character to move and point towards the mouse. So, I can add some uh, mouse control. So, um, we can just simply go to motion. And then, point towards mouse pointer. Put it inside of the if statement of if shop open equals no. And then, forever move, like, uh, four steps. And we actually should be good. So yeah, it now moves towards the mouse, like so. And we can actually make it um, shoot when you click. So instead of if key space press, then if mouse down, then shoot. So yeah, now this works like this. So we have our mouse control. So you can do that too. Anyways, I'm going to stick with my um, keyboard control. So, yeah. Actually, I might do a hybrid where I move with my keyboard. And then I can control the player's direction and shooting with the mouse. So I think that might be better. So I'm going to add these if statements back into the forever loop. Take this out. And... Instead of these turn and moves, I replace this with, if right arrow key pressed, change x by 4. If left arrow key pressed, change x by negative 4. And then if up arrow key pressed, change y by 4. And then if down arrow key pressed, change y by negative 4. And we should be good. So let me test it. And it works like this. Yeah, I think this way is better. Um, yeah. I'm also going to add the WAS controls in here. So, if key right, arrow key pressed, and W pressed. And I'll do the same for the left arrow key. So, that is A. Actually, a right is D. And then up is going to be W. Up arrow key and W. And then down arrow key and S. Alright, so now this, um, oh yeah, okay, sorry. It's or, so, uh, uh, right arrow or key D pressed. And then do the same for the rest of them. Or, so up arrow, 
or W. Down arrow or key S. All right, now this should work. Yep, and it looks pretty good. And now press P for the shop. And it works pretty well. So we have our gameplay and shop done. Actually, uh, all right, I can't buy anything. That's weird. Let me try it again. Oh, yeah, okay. Now it's good. So, yeah. Go to the front. That's going to be it for this tutorial. In the next video, I will be adding some more um, gameplay mechanics by making the game progressively harder or something like that. I'll also work on a main menu screen and loose screen. So anyways, I guess this series is coming to an end, and in a few more videos, I will have a completed game. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe too if you haven't already. Anyways, that's it for this video. See ya!